call it the firing line. It's basically the same thing as before, but I'm going to give you the name of a wrestler, and you tell me basically what you think of them. I imagine for the most part you're going to say they're good, or at least there's going to be a funny story uh, behind uh-huh. the name. Okay. First one, I, I don't know what they were called in OVW, but I remember them as the Gemini Twins. You know the bold twins? The Gemini Twins? I don't know who that is. Oh, you're going to... I'm going to have to Google this one second. Okay, we've established it's the Shane Twins, and you can't remember. We're going to move on. Um, someone asked for a fun story about Billy Jack Haynes. Okay, I knew Billy. I was in with Billy in uh, in Tampa, and he had broke in uh, with Don Owens there. He used to be a mark. Buddy Rose used to like spit at him and everything. And then Buddy or uh, Billy, he was he was out there. I scared death of him. I remember I worked with him in Tampa, and I had him press slam me and everything. I never had no troubles with him, but I was scared to death of him, and I didn't want him to. I didn't want him to go after me, but uh, uh, he he was he was he was a good wrestler. He was jacked. He didn't have no trouble selling. Uh, so he's all right with me. Mm-hmm. Sean O'Hare. He was a real tough guy. He was a badass. He looked great and I was scared of him and, and he didn't like, he didn't really like authority. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was sort of scared of him because I just thought he was a loose cannon ready to go off. Did you have to meet his he, brother? Uh, 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 Shane, right? Is it Shane? The, 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 Sh- Shan? Was it Shan? Yeah. Shan O'Hare. Yeah. He was, he was like his brother was, a, I think he was like six, four, six, five. And just jacked, and uh, Shan was just the opposite. Mm. But I, yeah, I had him in class too. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one. We've already mentioned Junkyard Dog, but um, you wrestled him in WCW, didn't you? Like the later, like early nineties. Well, you? it's like it's like Dog. I tell you some Dog story. I met Dog when he was Leroy Rochester, working for Nick Goulas in in seventy eight, and then uh, he was God in Mid South. So he just drew so much money, but he was, and he was still very limited, but he had such good heels to work with. He was great. And then when he worked, uh, he left there and went to the big time. I had him in for some shows. I remember I wired him some, I wired him $200 up front and Pez was supposed, Pez Watley was supposed to bring him, bring him to town where he was working and to get there. He said, Oh, there's no dog. I said, well, dog got me. I just wrote off the 200 bucks. I said, he got me. I said, but he made me a lot of money in mid South. So what the hell? Mm. But, but I uh, worked a lot of matches with him. Uh, that's when Ole would call you up and said, Hey, can you work with the dog for a week? Sure. Can Ole? He mm. says, okay, so you ain't got no complaints. Oh, hell no. He does the best he can. He's limited. I know what he can do. That's great. But what the hell? Uh, the next one's Ole Anderson. I'll probably skip Ole. We've talked about him. Mark Henry. Love Mark Henry. Love Mark Henry. He was in OVW when I was there. World's strongest man. I used to fuck with him, and he could have killed me. He used to wear these big old red tennis shoes. I didn't think they had boots that big. But look at him. He's still making money, getting money, getting that check, getting that bag at AEW. The last time they were the last time they were in town in Indianapolis, he come saw me. We did a bunch of videos, got lots of pictures of me and him flipping the bird and whatever talking shit and telling stories, love him to death, always will. Mm. He plugged my book for what the hell, right? Book? Oh, it's, well, you need to plug the book. Oh, I just happen to have a book with me right here. You can get it on Amazon, the book on pro wrestling, Lessons from Rip Rogers. Get it at Amazon right now. Right hey. now, baby. Amazon, Lessons from Rip Rogers. Hey, hey I just have to have a T-shirt with me right here, prowrestlingtees.com. Right there. Plug in the, plug in the podcast. And get your ripped T-shirt from uh, prowrestlingtees.com. Hey, that's and don't what get you're here for. That's we've we've got to get the, we've got to get the news out there, man. We've got to get oh, the news out. Oh hell yeah! Hey, before hell um, yeah. before I move off, uh, Mark Henry, I want to ask you this. Obviously, uh, you know, you sent a lot of people up to WWE that you trained. Maybe not quite as many as Kenny Bolin, but uh, <laughs> but um, also, uh, I'm sure most people watching this will know that a lot of people from the WWE, WWF, whatever year it was, also came down for either seasoning or to lose weight or, you know, to get ring shape after an injury. Who had who had the best attitude 
from the WWF down to OVW because I think Mark Henry had a good attitude. Like Big Show came down, other people. Yeah, like Big, that. yeah, Big Show had a good attitude, and uh, I remember he ate like twenty four uh, tacos, and then <laughs> I said, "You're going to puke." So and to make a long story short, pretty soon he was puking. <laughs> I said, if you learn something, yeah, I won't do that anymore. Uh, yeah, but all the under. guys, a, a lot of the guys that come down had really good attitudes and they treated it as such because it, uh, they knew what they were supposed to do. And I said, look, boys, I'm just a stooge. So whatever you're supposed to do. And then if, uh, if they ask me what you did, I will tell them what you did so that if you show up late, Yes, I will tell them you showed up late. I'm not a stooge. You're making your own, you're digging your own grave or, uh, or, or whatever. Just do what you're supposed to do. Mm. You're big boys. You're making a lot of money doing not so real pro wrestling. Live the dream. Have a good time. Mm. Uh, Austin Idol. Austin Idol. I really learned to work from Austin Idol. Great promos, great body in the ring. I worked 10 weeks in a row with him for Fuller. And didn't really like to do jobs. Uh, but what Babyface does. Uh, but he could really, as soon as he started wrestling, the aura was gone. As long as he stayed in character and think of Jimmy Valiant but built could strut, had the fuck, was built, could talk. He was a star. Mm. He knew how to be a star. He knew how to work his gimmick, and I followed his lead and would only do things to make him look great. Always got along with him, and he and he could usually uh, uh, go to Memphis, work there for months and months and months, go to Atlanta, maybe go to Charlotte, go to Tampa or whatever. But he was always usually where he was used to sunshine, baby. <laughs> well, you know, that's funny you mentioned that. So the story I always heard was that Austin Idol never made it big in like WCW or wherever it was because he just didn't like the travel. Right. Mm hmm. But just, I just, I, but I understand that. Was he just like homesick or did he not like flying or? Well, he was in that plane crash. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Mike... Yeah, so. I imagine he didn't want to fly the rest of his life. <laughs> well, uh, wasn't it the old joke that everyone wanted to fly with Ric Flair because what are the chances of a uh, plane crashing twice in one lifetime? Well, I, I heard that one. Yeah. But... Uh, okay, we'll move on. Um, Gypsy Joe. Gypsy Joe. I like Gypsy Joe. He was a tough guy. You could hit him, no matter how hard you hit him, he'd say, hit me harder. I said, Joe, why would I hit you harder? You're the no pain train. You ain't going to sell it anyway. So fuck you. I ain't going to hit you hard. <laughs> <laughs> but he had chopped the shit out of you and he loved getting chopped back. He, he, he was a tough guy. He was a good guy too. Yeah. The road warriors. Did you ever wrestle the road, war, war, uh, road warriors? They used to put me a lot on TV with them and it always beat the other guy. I knew what they wanted and I could do all their stuff. And I said, and I said, I told Hawk, I said, Hey, I can get you guys shit over. And as long as you don't, they don't beat me. They beat my partner. I can, they'd always let me take a powder and powder out. You see what I mean? Yeah. So they had a good time. All right. We're with rip. We can do all of our shit. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's sort of funny, but Hey, you learn survival skills, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Earthquake. Uh, I don't know how many people know this. You wrestled against him in Japan, I think. Oh, yeah. I remember. Okay. Big John Tenta. He was a sumo guy. Mm -hmm. And he must have weighed legitimately about 370, I'm thinking. And I remember I called something, and I'm coming off him 100 miles an hour from off the ropes. And, and I see him looking his eyes with panic. He's saying, his eyes are saying, what did you say? All of a sudden, as I'm I'm a half I'm a half step from I'm going hip toss. So boom, he gives me a judo throw. Boom, right? <laughs> and we just laughed about that. But he was he was a really good guy. Mm. Big John Tenta was. He wouldn't hurt a fly. Brian Pillman. Oh, Pillman was great. Uh, I had him in Calgary. Yeah. 
And then so, once I went out, we, we worked a three match format on TV and we got heat and, uh, I still made all the TVs, but they was keep me all, I was punished, but I didn't find out till later that I got punished for having too good of a matches with Pillman. <laughs> No, that was that right. was the thing. Uh, don't overstep. But all I want to do, like all the guys, they want to see him do it on, on video, right? So you got it forever. Yeah. So he's clotheslining me off the balcony and shit, right? We're just busting balls, and he'd be there, and he hated working with me because I was a cardio king, and he'd be taking that thing <gasps> to, to make you breathe good. Uh, uh, but he was, we had beat the shit out of each other, but he was so coordinated. And he was years ahead of everybody as far as this, the mind in the wrestling business. He was really, really good. I love work with Brian Pillman. And I got to work with his his son. And when he was around, he would come down and see me at OBW. And he was a good kid. But I think he's under I think he's working with AEW. Yep, he is, yeah. But but Brian Pillman, he was he was a hell of a talent. Sting. I know you mentioned Sting before you wrestled him. Sting ended up being a good pro. Uh, he's got longevity. He always looked good. He had that ring with Luger. So, and he's obviously did. What I hated was he wore pink. I was getting, <laughs> I would get heat wearing pink. And then he's wearing pink as a baby face. Now you're, th you're throwing mixed signs to the fans. You know, and then he, when he would scream, he had that high voice, which is a no-no. Then he was wearing pink, which is a no-no. But who gives a fuck what I think? He was blonde. But, he was blonde at the time as well. Yeah. Uh, well, but he, but he, I remember meeting him when he come into Lexington. It was him and the Ultimate Warrior was there when I was, I was in there for Jared or something when they first come in and God, they were fucking rotten, but they sure as hell made a lot of money. So that's all you can gauge it by. Uh, so, well, he's had a great career. There's no doubt about that. So what the hell? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to limit it to three more. Um, the shock master. Now who's the shock master? Was that, was, that the guy? That was Fred Ottman. And, Fred he, fell Ottman. Th and he fell through. That's the wall. when he fell through the thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was when he fell through the thing. That was, uh, yeah. Fred wasn't very coordinated. He was a nice guy. Hell, he was huge. And he had that little head, so it made his arms look. <laughs> he looked, he looked like a, he looked like a cartoon character. He was a guy. He wasn't no high spot guy, as you can see, but he made a hell of a living. So what the hell, right? Uh, no, that was a high spot through the wall. It was oh. an amazing high spot. And then it was, and only he could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Two more, then. Um, I'm going to ask. This is the penultimate one. Andre the Giant. Okay, I got to drive Andre around a little bit when I was in Nashville. I picked him up at the airport. I had a van, and and it, all it had in it was a bunch of beer and a bunch of mattresses so he could lay in the back. And I drove into some towns and everything. Mm -hmm. And then he was still calling me boss. He called everybody boss, you know. And he ripped some, and he ripped some great farts. <laughs> so uh, that, that was about it. Uh <laughs> Uh, was taking him around to Nick Gulas' territory. I was low man on the totem pole, so I got to do that. When Mark Lewin comes to town, whatever, I get to pick him. I get to pick him up at the airport. My driving, driving my, my 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 five speed Pinto. Pick them up. It was a small car. If he was a big guy, he was in trouble. Uh, but anyway, I was low man on the totem pole, so I had to do the shit job because I was a rotten worker. 